Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Tiago Palen uh, with TriStar. Uh, welcome to the TriStar webinar. Uh, today's uh, topic is going to be on Creo 7 enhancements. We have been doing quite a few of these webinars, and today we'll be focusing more on the new technologies, uh, the new exciting technologies, I should say, and the extensions. Um, before we get started, just a few logistics here. All of you will be uh, on mute during the presentation. Uh, but please uh, uh, you know, start typing in any questions that you may have in the questions area in the webinar. Uh, and, and then there's also a handout section. Uh, you, you know, if you're interested to see some uh, top enhancements, maybe there's a PDF that goes over uh, some of the top enhancements that you could uh, check it out um, during the presentation. So that's in the handout section of this webinar. Okay. Uh, so with that said, uh, those are not familiar with, uh, some of you may be familiar with TriStar, but those are not familiar with TriStar. Um, we are a company uh, that, that specializes uh, in helping manufacturing companies adopt software systems and processes um, to enable better and more efficient product development, right? So uh, we are also the, the largest uh, worldwide reseller for PTC. Uh, we are headquartered in Arizona and we do have um, um, our team spread across the United States and Canada. Um, we have uh, been in the business for over 25 years. Uh, we are experts in CAD, PLM. Uh, we've been delivering several eventual projects, a lot of custom solutions, best practices, methodologies, etc. Um, so that's just a little bit about our company. Um, as for myself, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer and uh, I've been uh, in the PTC ecosystem my 24 years. Started with um, Revision uh, Pro Engineer 16 back in 96 and worked for several companies, uh, including Dorsal Ran, Caterpillar, Deer. For the last 10 plus years, I've been working for TriStar uh, as a senior applications engineer. Uh, we, uh, I, I sometimes teach classes, uh, we do pre-sales, demos, webinars, multiple things. We wear multiple hats, hats in the company here. So that's a little bit of overview about myself and my company. Um, so from um, before we talk about the agenda, I just wanted to quickly go over some of the uh, time-limited offers that we have running through this quarter, so through, the, uh, through uh, September. Uh, so if you would, are interested to know more about these, uh, please reach out to your account rep reps at TriStar, or you could just go to tristar.com to get more information about these time-limited offers. Uh, with that said, uh, let's take a look at the agenda here. Um, so the agenda, um, uh, you know, we have been doing this uh, like almost every month. Uh, uh, this is my second or third uh, Creo 7 webinar. Uh, some of you may have uh, watched the core enhancements in July, and this time we thought of covering some of the new exciting technologies, specifically real-time simulation and simulation live, uh, the frustum-based generative design uh, for topology optimization, uh, and also the easy tolerance analysis, which is kind of replacing the old tolerance analysis for 1D stack-up, tolerance stack-up, right? Including some nice enhancements in additive manufacturing as well as subtractive manufacturing that they introduced in 7.0. Um, now, if you if you look at the the enhancements um, uh, overall, right, in Creo 7.0 compared to Creo 6, as many of you may know, uh, Creo was released uh, April, mid-April, actually. So PTC is going to go with a yearly release cycle, right? Um, and the areas are all the way from augmented reality, the core modeling, assembly, well design, rendering, and some of these new exciting technologies that we're going to be talking about all the way till toolkit. There's several of them. And that's why we have been doing these as, as separate webinars. If uh, some of if you've, any of you have not attended the core enhancements and multi-body enhancement, uh, feel free to visit TriStar's uh, YouTube channel and we have the recording of the uh, of the webinar, uh, of all our webinars, including the Creo 7 new and core areas and the multi-body enhancement. Uh, TriStar, so a YouTube channel there. Okay, so Let's get to the first uh, topic here. Uh, the first one is on Creo Simulation Live, uh, which is powered by ANSYS. So a couple of years ago, uh, ANSYS came out of the product called ANSYS Discovery Live and PTC is the exclusive partner now, wherein um, that solver is running inside of Creo Parametric uh, and it's called Live Simulation, right? 
It's uh, real-time feedback is its strength, and it's uh, the goal is to democratize simulation for everybody, right? So whether you could be a, a designer engineer or a mechanical engineer, but you may not be experienced. But you want to have some quick, like a quick directional tool, uh, wherein you're not doing the typical pre-processing, the post-processing. You just want something live that's going to help you guide your decisions or your design decisions. Um, allows true simulation driven design okay so it's been uh it's it's compatible uh since creo 4.0 mo90 date code and also creo 5 6 and 7 there have been some enhancements too in 7.0 we'll uh, focus on that i'll also show you some basic structural ones uh, for those who have not seen it before but we'll also focus some of the the enhancements here so first of all creo simulation live uh, itself is fully integrated into uh, creo parametric Please remember, it is not Creo Simulate, the old Mechanica product. It's uh, it's completely a different product here uh, that gives you uh, allows you to do structural, thermal, and modal, and fluids starting Creo 7.0. Right? It is an add-on license. Right? It's not included in any of the packages. Um, however, the the key strength here is it's make it's leveraging your graphics card's GPU for uh, quick feedback. Right? As you make changes to the design you're not even having to hit a run button it gives you immediate feedback and i'll show that in a little bit here um, there are a few enhancements they did in 7.0 one of the big ones being uh, the ability to do some basic fluid flow inside of creo simulation live you know like i said it's they've been there since creo 4.0 where you had structural uh, modal and then a little bit of thermal now there are some enhancements on the thermal side as well as the fluid side, right? Uh, you can automatically create the fluid domain, external flow, internal flow, right? With a lot of reporting uh, tools, um, as you can see in those images here. So uh, right within Creo for parts and assemblies, you'll be able to use it, right? Uh, there's also some, those are already using it, right? Creo Simulation Live. There are some nice enhancements like the ability to use a user-defined coordinate system uh, maybe for direction or for applying loads, right? You don't, you no longer have to rely only on the world coordinate system, right? You can use your own user-defined coordinate system. You might have like an angle surface like here, and um, uh, you know, in order in sort of determining the actual vectors right in there, you could just select the direction, and 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 there it goes, right? It'll it'll be able to just go normal to that surface by selecting that surface. So some nice enhancements there, some usability enhancements on um, you know display height and height. Uh, previewing of boundary conditions and showing the surface ID, etc. If you are already using CSL or Creo Simulation Live, okay. Uh, the fluids now that they've introduced fluids, the fluids has an enhanced uh, legend, right? Compared to the previous solvers now, so that's available both in the structure mode as well as in all other analysis types. Um, there is also support for modeler. Uh, optimization and sensitivity studies. Um, some of you might remember BMX, it's called Behavior Modeler Extension. It's a very old extension that PTC had had for a long time where you're able to uh, specify some goals uh, based on parameters, uh, and then you can give it a range for multiple dimensions and it'll help you optimize it rather than you doing all the heavy lifting, you're having the software do it. Now, the C outputs could be used inside of BMX to do those type of optimization studies as well, okay? Um, and then they support linear acceleration now uh, instead of CSL. Uh, one nice thing that they introduced in Creo 6, which some of you have not noticed, is the ability to create a scope for your analysis where you could have a very large assembly, but you could just create a couple of parts or a select a few uh, interested components in there, or in this case, one single part that I've done and just run the analysis only on that component, even though I'm the context of the assembly. So in, in the past, you know, we would have to, in Creo 4 or 5, we would have to do this with a simplified wrap, or we have to defeature it, right? Or, or you know, suppress those components or do a simp wrap. In, instead of that, now the scope is uh, very, very useful for that. So some, some nice enhancements there. Uh, and then the transient thermal analysis is possible now, right, with uh, 7.0. Um, and some of the uh, constraint types to mimic real world behavior like a cylindrical support or a ball support or a planar support, those are included, right? Many of these are kind of like what we used to have in the Creo Simulate, those things are kind of coming 
are, are, are also available now inside of Creo Simulation Live. Okay. Um, and finally, the multi-body design, right? Some of you may know one of the biggest enhancements in Creo 7.0 is the multi-body, right? Where it has several, several use cases, and we have talked about it in a previous webinar that you can feel free to check it out in our YouTube channel. But then Creo Simulation Live uh, leverages that multi-body capability instead of 7.0, especially when it comes to fluid flow, like here, I have a plunger body, I have the actual fluid body, for the fluid volume and I have the outside body and all those three, that's one single part having multiple bodies. And I'm able to even mimic the open and close of the plunger here. For example, this body could be modified, for example, right? Using something like flexible modeling extension or some edit dimensions, right? And I'm able to see in real time, the update on the flow, right? That I might be interested in. Okay, like pressure, velocity, et cetera. Okay. So, um, before I show you an example or a demo, uh, just real quick here, there are like a couple of uh, options for this. There's Creo Simulation Live and Live Plus. The difference between them is really the fluids, right? With Live Plus, you have the, the fluids capability, right? The rest of it, like the structural, thermal, and modal, they're all in the Creo Simulation Live as well. So that's a new, the Live Plus was something introduced in 7.0. You know, I know in the new release there. So let me just before we take go to the next topic, let me take a quick look at. Uh, I'm going to just show you um, an example here. Um, maybe let's just see if I could go to Creo. So I have Creo 7.0.1.0. It's kind of like the old uh, M110, right? That's the uh, M M10. I'm sorry. That's the one I'm using right now. And I'm going to just start off with a very simple example for those who have never used. Uh, simulation and I thought of giving a quick example like a structural example first so if I could go to um, a, a, an assembly a typical assembly here and let's say I'm taking the role of a design engineer right uh, I'm, I'm working on this assembly and I'm not let's assume that I don't have experience in simulation but I'm working on this bracket on the support part here for this uh, engine uh, sub assembly on the entire assembly there and I'm still in the process of uh, designing it, right? So let me activate that and I might wanna go, I have some couple of sketches done here. As you can see, I have a few external sketches done. I'm still not yet sure what shape I'm gonna use, right? I'm in an early state. Rather than doing simulation as a final validation stage, it'll be nice to have uh, a simulation driven design process wherein something is kind of guiding you if you are going in the right direction, right? So I'm gonna just, go and extrude that sketch, simple extrude here, and go up to here, and maybe go up to, uh, let's see here, to the other surface, right? And there it is, right? It's a simple, simple extrude I've done. Now, I could do an assembly analysis, or let me just do it at part level first. And, and in this part, right now, I might wanna just uh, go to live simulation, so this is where you have live simulation, right in here. You still have your applications. If you go to applications, you still have your old, you know, Creo Simulate, Flow Analysis, all the other applications, but the ANSYS powered Creo Simulation Live is what I just clicked on here under Live Simulation. It's loading the ANSYS and the solver as we speak right now, and it is, there it is, right? Pretty straightforward. So if I go and I wanna just maybe uh, add a force uh, on top here, maybe I wanna go direction, these are some of the new enhancements they did where for direction, I can select a, a direction reference now instead of the I, you know, the X, Y, Z or I, J, K vectors. Say I want to apply a, a load of uh, about so much pounds in here, right? Uh, and I also want to um, fix the bottom here. Uh, the material is assigned. You know, you still have your Creo material library that you can assign. I have steel assigned. That's pretty much it, right? I'm just hitting this little play button and hitting that play button essentially is making use of the GPU uh, right now, and it is solved it, right? And that's it, right? It is giving me the actually the stress plot here, the von Mises stress, the hot colors, where's the cool colors, pretty straightforward here. Um, and maybe, maybe I wanna know it in a different unit system like megapascal or PSI, what have you, right? Um, I can look at the max minimum, et cetera. But the thing is I'm not yet sure about my design, right? Okay, this shows 15 megapascal, but I could just go back to my design environment. See, I'm back in my good old Creo modeling, modeling environment, and I'm able to just go uh, select this extrude and just say, instead of that shape, what happens if I use this shape? I just redefined that, that feature. And as you can see, immediately, 
the software or Creo Simulation Live, it's giving me instant feedback and it's telling me if you use this shape, the stress is gonna be 59 megapascal, right? That's not good. Let me go back at a definition. I'm gonna go back to another shape. So all I'm doing is I've, I've, I have a bunch of external sketches defined, right? About three or four sketches and I'm trying out things rather than you know sending it to the analyst and having him you know go through this it's as i'm the designer the engineer is is having this tool more from a directional point of view right is it it's just giving you good direction here that's it right uh so if you see 17 megapascal that looks better or maybe i'm saying okay i got one more uh one alternate shape here like maybe i'm the surfacing guy like like the fancy shape here I, I, this is the shape I'm looking, and let's see here again, it looks like it's it's starting to go back up here. So I'm thinking the best we have so far is the first one here, right? The first shape, let me just sit with that, right? Um, but let's, let's say I wanna improve that um, design, right? We would like to obviously improve this design much more than how it is right now. Uh, it's 15 megapascals, so I'm just saying, okay, let's add a fillet here, right? Obviously we'd have a fillet here to relieve the stress. Let's see what happens. As soon as I added the fillet, I'm not going to another application, hitting run analysis, stop analysis. I'm just in my, it's the seamlessly, I'm just in my design environment here, right? Gave it some radius. I'm done with the radius. Immediately, the system recalculates in seconds, right? It's using GPU. I'm not having to recreate the mesh. So ANSYS uses, you know, proprietary, you know, their own proprietary woggle based meshing, and that's kind of why we don't even get to see it, right? It's one of the biggest things in ANSYS Discovery Live that, that is working behind this. And immediately gives us, and it's telling that it's brought it down a little bit, right? 13 megapascal right there. I'm still not happy here, right? I, I do have some high stresses there. Maybe I want to go and add chamfer in there, and maybe I can just use all the new usability enhancements in Creo, right? You no longer have to use a dashboard. In Creo 6 itself, they introduced all this pretty nice where I can go D1 by D2, just selecting, you're, you're just focusing on your design, right? Your focus stays on the design actually. And I'm done with the chamfer, immediately it kicks in, right? The simulation kicks in and it's telling me, okay, that we have reduced the stress there. Um, so, and again, I can, I can go back to my, um, uh, to the actual live simulate environment here, do the animation, right? You know, deformation, I can look at deformation and all the other options here too, or just look at the stress is what I'm interested in right now. Or I could go back to my modeling environment and say, let's, you know, we want to further improve this, obviously. And maybe I want to add a rib real quick on one of these planes, right? I have a, a datum plane done here, and I'm going to just use that, right? I'm going to just go, uh, just do some reference selection as we sketch, right? You can just hold Alt, and I can just selecting some reference as I go here. And there it is. And I'm just going to give it a, a specific thickness here. I'm done with it. As soon as I'm done with that rib, um, it gives me the result here, right? It's telling me, okay, that's where the high stress is now, right? It's gone away from there. And maybe I want to go back to that rib and I want to say, let's just pattern that rib. Now, when I pattern it, notice a user interface here, right? You see how it's all the direction pattern, you know, uh, table pattern, right? Fill pattern, they're all available here. Instead of going to the dashboard, my focus stays in the design here, right? So I'm going to go, let's do a direction pattern and I want to go direction pattern off of this guy and say, okay, so let's just say I want to have about three of them, right? I want to have about three, three of them, and and let's see if that helps, right? So as I'm adding these, uh, I'm I'm able to get in real time feedback, right? I'm not having to send it to my analysis department, right? As the engineer, the designer, I get some feedback in instantly, right? Almost instantly, like this here, right? It's nine megapascal so i was able to get it to below 10 megapascal here for the high stress right that might be my factor of safety that i'm looking at right i know for steel it's you know 200 230 megapascal if you look at the yield strength for steel so we are well below yield but still i'm just saying you know this is how you improve it you could further do like dimensional changes you see whenever i make changes the result goes away and then of the result right it's pretty much rerunning the the it's it's giving me the feedback there right so it's now I've, I've made it really much stronger than it was before right from 15 megapascal i got it down to six megapascal so now i'm thinking okay I'm, I'm i'm cool with this design or at least it looks like this design is going the right direction and i could just go back to my assembly and i could do an assembly level analysis so it's not just about part right i could select this entire part and if it's fully bonded able to go mirror this guy off of let's say i want to mirror off of this right data plane here all right and i want a little preview so that design is working we'll just mirror it over to the other side there it goes i have the entire assembly 
Could we do a live simulation of the entire assembly? Absolutely, right? Normally, what would you do on an assembly like this? You would have to defeature, get rid of unwanted components. But in live, in simulate Creo simulation live, all you're doing is, you know, having the assembly as this. I'm applying my using my mini toolbar here to fix that. I maybe I could just apply some some loads and constraints here, right? I'm just gonna go say in the in the let's go to you know in the y direction. Maybe I want to go give it a a negative. 100 here we'll just set up some some magnet like direction values here there it goes and i'm looking at these triad right as i'm doing this i'm looking at this triad and i'm applying those uh there it goes and now again i just hit the live simulation button the materials are of course assigned to all the parts right uh and when i uh do a lot this takes it is an assembly so it's obviously taking a little more time but maybe you know instead of one second it took like two or three seconds as you can see and there it is immediate feedback right i can go look at the at deformation right there it is right and 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 you know I, I you can see that when i zoom in these approximations and everything here right there there's fidelity settings for that right i have a performance option and i can control how much of my gpu is being used right the ram in my gpu for my graphics card right i can slide this over to highest accuracy versus speed you know all that good stuff so so my, this is this is what Creo Simulation Live is, right? And it does, you know, structural, modal, et cetera, right? So that's, uh, now, the enhancements in Creo 7.0 is mainly in the area of um, fluids, right? So for example, if I go to, let's see here, if, I, if I'm gonna go to, a, it could be internal flow or external flow. If I open another assembly here, let's say I have an enclosure assembly, right? I go into Live Simulation, I do have a fluid study, so we could define like structural, right, thermal, modal, fluids, et cetera. And I do have a fluid study here already defined, right? I have some boundary conditions. I've applied air as a inside the flow velocity, applied outside pressure, right? And some thermal conditions, some initial temperature conditions there. And all I hit is hit this little uh, play button or play results button, and it's gonna kick in. It's gonna give you the, the results for your flow, right? That you're seeing right now. Okay, so what we are looking at right now is currently velocity, right? As you can see in here, uh, and I can go look at cut plane and right. I can see uh, additional things like maybe I want to look at uh, streamlines or particles, right? So all those, right? You know, there's so many uh, options for for results displays, but it's in quick time just applying uh, your your uh, boundary conditions, and uh, the you know it also automatically creates a fluid volume there, right? It's it's quite useful that way. And you can, you know, look at velocity, you can look at pressure and, you know, uh, temperature, et cetera, right? You can look at all those different options here. So, you know, internal, external fluid flow, they both are uh, all supported in starting 7.0, okay? So if I were to open this um, uh, this race car assembly here, even for external flow, you can do use live simulation. So for example, if I have, I'm gonna go to my fluid simulation study and uh, I could define a fluid volume and that's the biggest advantage Normally, you would have to spend some time using creating the fluid volume, but you just have the ability to do internal or ex enclosure volume real quick, and it puts in like a box. You know, those have used the manufacturing module, so the on the CNC on the CAM software of Creo, you know, it's almost like that reference model you get, right? You know, I'm just going to I'm just going to quickly, uh, you know, uh, make it a little longer here. So we got some, um, just make it a little uh, longer or something like that. Looks like that should be okay. And, and over here, I'm gonna give it a specific distance. Some distance here, I'm just, you know, my external volume is what I'm uh, looking at here. Maybe we'll just go with uh, something like that, right? So, and immediately it puts a transparency automatically and, you know, very minimal, you know, inputs from the user as you can see here, uh, other than the size. And I go to my flow velocity and say, maybe I wanna apply a specific velocity. Let's say I wanna apply about, in the X direction, about 40 uh, meters per second here. Uh, maybe I want to just also assign that same boundary condition uh, instead of, uh, let me just go to that same boundary condition and also apply it to the bottom there. And I want to apply slip symmetry. These are my going to be the, the boundaries there. And as for the outlet pressure, it's going to be we'll just give it a, a zero outlet pressure on there. And that's pretty much it, except I have to assign the material, right? So you might have noticed in Creo, when you assign materials, you might have seen a, a folder for fluid materials and this is now you know why we have their air carbon dioxide you know you can also create your own water etc i'm just going to select air right now 
Um, uh, let me just go select air. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And I hit the, the live simulation uh, right in here. And immediately you get a feedback of the, the simulation, as you can see here, right? The velocity profiles, you can see that, right? Is it going to be velocity or do you need to see the, the pressure, right? All that, you know, it, it's happening. I don't know. Hopefully it's coming through over the go to webinar in real time there, depending on your internet connection, but you could see the, the, the difference there, right? So I'm able to see that in, in real time there. So I'm going to, I'm going to switch it back to my, um, um, uh, yeah. So, so let's see here if I could, I'm going to just go, you know, these are just, just a very high level overview on, on some of the, the CSL capabilities. Uh, that we that we have uh, gone through so far, right? Let me just uh, get out of that tool here and 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 get back to my presentation here, so we could uh, look at a few other things, do a few other tools, like generative design, right? That's another big one uh, introduced in Creo 7.0. Uh, some of you may have heard uh, PTC acquired a company called Frustum, and uh, the AI engine of Frustum is what is uh, generative topology optimization. This is an extension again, another add-on extension. Uh, so what it really allows you to do, if you think about it, is uh, that Frustum engine, it combines op, uh, you know, topology optimization and simulation algorithms to generate kind of like a series of results, right, that are optimized based on manufacturing criteria. That's a good thing about it, right? And it runs, you know, fully integrated in, in Creo Parametric starting 7.0, right? Uh, PTC used to have a different optimization, you know, in 5 and 6, but this is the latest one in 7.0, right? Um, so the, it, they support structural, thermal, and modal uh, currently. Uh, I mean, so thermal and modal will be supported in, in of, uh, Creo Parametric, but currently they support structural. Okay, so all you're doing is you're, you're, the way this works really is you're defining your solution space first, right? As shown in this example. And the good thing is when you give those manufacturing requirements, it will not only give you those fancy shapes for additive manufacturing that you're gonna 3D print, it'll also uh, take into account traditional manufacturing if you choose to, right? So that's a nice thing about this uh, GTO where you're able to specify build direction for 3D printing, you're able to specify parting line, if it's the traditional casting or forging methods. You could see these two examples I have here when I optimized it, the shape I got when I used the traditional you know, linear extrude process versus 3D printing, right? So you have a couple of options there, right? So so let me just, um, yeah, I'm gonna just go back to my Creo here and yeah, there it is, right? And, and, and I wanna quickly show you the process. In fact, uh, if I could go back to uh, the, the overall process is really you specify like a design space where you're making use of multi-bodies, right? Telling what is your starting geometry? What is the geometry you need to be preserved? So we don't want that to be affected by the optimization. What you need to exclude it, like this red area here, this red block, and you know, that, that little uh, body is gonna be excluded or that region is gonna be excluded. And you specify a grid design criteria, right? It could be manufacturing and geometry constraints, materials, goals, right? Maybe you could say, I wanna reduce the mass by 30%, strain energy, volume, et cetera, right? So, and you're specifying your design constraints, as you can see. So the build direction, you can specify the direction of the 3D printing um, and the value of the critical angle. As uh, all of you know, the critical angle is the maximum angle with respect to the, you know, the print direction at which supports are not required. So imagine, you know, it's kind of helping you through that, or you can just do typical parting line, right? So you can just use it for casting and forging methods. Like I said, it could be a 2D parting line, like a plane or a 3D parting line, like a curve. Uh, do, do, just do it as a linear extrude process, planar symmetry, right? The, the material spreading, right? How is that going to be, uh, you know, all that is your predetermining as a, as a design criteria here. And then it solves, right? It gives you stresses, uh, you know, deformations, obviously. And then it'll also give you this biggest thing here is the output, right? The final geometry, right? That is kind of fully featured and it leverages PTC's Frio, you know, freestyle, right, which is inside of Creo, um, that has created those, it uses subdivisional based modeling to generate that geometry. So, so unlike many optimi topology optimization softwares that would create a faceted model, 
you know, which you can do in similar in Creo as well, you're able to reconstruct it as an actual boundary rep model, right? So that's that's a huge uh, one in there. So let me show you a quick uh, example here. Um, I've, I've already optimized quite a few in here, but let me uh, just to show you the, the typical process of how uh, you would go about doing that. So if I open up um, a design here, I've, I have multiple bodies, as you can see here, I have an envelope body, right? If I isolate that, you see here I'm using the bodies concept can uh, start in Creo 7.0. As you, as you can see here, we have the ability to add multi bodies, right? Uh, so there's multiple bodies. If I go activate this, I have a keep load just for loading. I have uh, a, another one here, a few other uh, fixed ones that that is not going to participate in the optimization per se, right? I also have this shaft where I might want to use it to apply a load, for example, right? Um, and and l let's say I want to, uh, just unhide all of these right in here, right? I wanna just show everything in here, but when I go to applications, this is generative design. Starting 7.0, you're gonna see this generative design in here. And um, right now it says study is not fully defined here, right? So I don't have any, so I just have to start telling it the space. So my starting geometry really is the first thing, preserve geometry and exclude geometry, right? That's optional. So I'm gonna go tell my starting geometry is this, right? And immediately, as you can see, it has become uh, transparent, right? Uh, as you can see. And then uh, my preserved geometry, let's say I wanna go to the preserved geometry and say, that's gonna be this body, it's gonna be this body, it's gonna be this guy and this guy here, there it goes, right? Those are my preserved, uh, but, but, and there's, this is, I'm gonna leave it undesignated, but I'm gonna just use it for applying the load. That's why I didn't include in there. Um, I could have added, you know, another, uh, uh, geometry here and said, okay, I want to exclude that area, but right now that entire volume is available for it to optimize, right? Or do a, it's a, run its optimization algorithm, right? That's what we've done here. And then I could start applying some, some, some loads on it, right? So I could just say, you know, let's constrain. For example, I'm going to just go fully fix it here. Uh, we'll just fully fix it here and here. There it is. And I also want to apply some, some loads on it, right? And then we'll just give it a, a, a load in the y direction going up there about so much newtons there there it goes um and you know uh, right now uh, and i also want to make sure that this is bonded into this right this this is something that we didn't define so i'm going to add a, a contact interface between this body and this body here and uh, i also need to assign some criteria here right so i can just go assign some some criteria so I don't need this uh, additional, um, uh, let's see here, if I could go back to my constraints, I could have multiple ones in here. Let me delete the one that is currently on it, right? I have, uh, and let me just go to my uh, design criteria. And here I can, you know, limit the volume, you know, as a percentage, for example, let's say I want to reduce it 30%. And these are the constraints I was talking about, right? Whether it's the build direction for 3D printing, parting line, linear extrude. So it's kind of, allows you to apply constraints for both traditional subtractive manufacturing as well as additive manufacturing. That's the beauty about this new one. You know, the old one that we had uh, in, in, in Creo 5 and 6, if you remember, the, the VR&D based topology optimization didn't have that. It was mainly only for the, 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 the subtractive, or I'm sorry, the additive manufacturing, but this one supports both, right? I could either use that or I could simply say planar symmetry for now, material spreading, so here I'm going to just, you know, we'll, I'm just going to select one of these datum planes that I have as my, for symmetry here. Maybe I want to select the right plane as my symmetry. I want to assign uh, materials here. Maybe we'll just use uh, the current material, whatever that is applied in there. And that's, uh, that's so now that it's, I've assigned it, it's telling it's it's fully defined and and I should be able to just go, you know, optimize it and let's see. Being a simple model, it shouldn't take much time. I also have the, you know, multiple ones done, but I've, I've just started the hit, I'm hitting the, I've hit the optimize button here. And uh, as you can see, uh, it, it's it's starting to build, you know, within that shape, I asked it for planar symmetry and it has started to build that geometry there. Now, I didn't say it should be, uh, you know, it is going to be done using traditional manufacturing. In that case, it would have more done like an extruder or a prismatic shape. I just left it, uh, I didn't select any of those manufacturing constraints other than saying it should be symmetry and that the optimizer is finished right now as you can see here right and and what do you do with it now right obviously i can look at the results for this right i can look at the i can look at the animation here 
I can look at the, the deformation, the stress, et cetera. So maybe if I, you know, it, so it has the built-in FVA as well. It's doing a simple linear one in there for that load and it's giving me that idea. I can add, it's, it's uh, however, you know, I can, um, if I close out of that and, 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 you know, I'm able to just, you know, hover over it. It tells me, it's almost, almost like a probe it gives me in, in real time. as to what is a Von Mises stress, for example. Uh, I can finally generate the design. You know, we, we, the whole point of doing this is to create the design. So I'm going to hit that. And this is where I could either keep it as a tessellated uh, file or I could just do a reconstruction uh, to a boundary rep model. And I can just create a new part. And I have, you know, several options here, right? One degree, you know, second, different levels of detail. I'm just going to give the first level here. So before, you know, for in quick time, we could see something going, happening here. And let me just say, I want to go into, we'll just call it, uh, you know, um, some part it's um, it's actually going to generating that part as we speak using the freestyle um, uh, feature that I was talking about right which you're you can edit if required and you can go do multiple alternates like this in fact starting 7.0 mo20 in the next date code um, you know PTC is planning to have this more of a cloud-based um, uh, environment wherein imagine um, multiple design alternatives could be av made available in the cloud right? and then you could go run it uh, for multiple um, different criteria and then you can choose which one to go with and and right now you know I'm, I'm using 7010 which is the MO10 date code the, the first one the new naming convention is different but okay so that's um, so it is, it is creating that and, and there it is, right? And what it did was you could see the fully featured design with what we had originally and then the generative design and the reconstruction geometry, that's key here. It has done this automatically when I hit that reconstruct, it has done this for me. And I'm able to go to that reconstruct shape, I could do edit definition and I'm able to make changes to that as I'm inside of any other free shape. You see, can that has done a line curve. It has done, it's really done all the alignment for me here inside of free, uh, you know, inside of freestyle. Those are done some surfacing, concepting. You might have used this uh, freestyle. That's what it's uh, leveraging here to create that shape. You know, now if I'd given a different constraint, it would be different. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, you could have also applied like, for example, uh, something like, like this in here where. If I go into uh, generated design, as you can see, you know this is um, this is another design here where I have I've uh, I've gotten this kind of a shape and the constraints that I applied here. You could see that if I go to my design criteria, uh, I have given an extrude direction and an extrude angle of three degrees, and that's kind of why you could see it has created that shape from the bottom. You know, I select that as a as my extrude surface and did symmetry. So you know, it's uh, yeah something that you know, you could you know uh, play with if you have the, the the license for this, and it gives you uh, both for you know options for both traditional and uh, uh, additive manufacturing there. Okay, so let me go to a couple more uh, ones that I wanted to quickly go over here. Um, uh, the easy tolerance analysis, right? That's uh, a PTC used to have uh, for some of you who may not be aware something called tolerance analysis extension. It was uh, way back in Pro Engineer Wildfire 4.0 itself. It was available. Uh, it was Sigmetrics based, right? It's, uh, there's a company called Sigmetrics that many of you know that 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 are uh, that create these uh, CE tall uh, softwares, right? For tolerance stackup, both 1D and 3D complex uh, tolerance stackup. Uh, you know, PTC had a lightweight of that, and uh, they made it easier, much more easier, starting Creo, um, you know, 5.0. Uh, in 5.06 is when they introduced this, uh, and it's backward compatible. We'll talk about the compatibility in which releases in a little bit here. But, uh, you know, bottom line, what I'm trying to say, long story short, Creo Easy Tolerance uh, will be in the old tolerance analysis extension, right? So if you already have that extension, you will be getting this. But the goal is to keep it simple and allow you to do 1D stack up tolerancing. During my industry days, I remember, you know, doing this on spreadsheets, right? I mean, uh, for those tolerance stack up, when, when manufacturing is coming back, is asking me, and a department comes back and say, why did you add such a tight tolerance? I'm able to show, right? I, I'd like to see, show maybe the, the DPMU, the defective parts per million operations, the yield percent, uh, you know, so it's more, of, oh, it also gives you not only the worst case, um, condition, you know, uh, uh, results. It also gives you 
uh, RSS, statistical uh, results, yield percent. All you have to do is, you know, you know, like doing a gap analysis, specify the two geometries and it automatically evaluates the mate surfaces or you can manually do it too. It can also leverage thing, uh, can, you know, um, uh, geometric tolerances that you may have given or dimensional uh, constraint, uh, tolerance you may have given. It, will, it, it has the ability to use that. As you can see, it's, it's a quick way to create a dimension loop diagram, very, very quick. And as the name says, they got to do justice for the name, right? Easy tolerance. So it is real easy. I'm going to show you real quick here. This is a, and if there are some 3D effects, it'll tell you calculated results are uh, ignoring potentially significant 3D effects. So this is maybe you got to go to a, a higher end software instead of just doing this 1D stack up. You know, it has those recommendations as well, other than giving you results and contributions, et cetera. Right. So, so really it's a stack up and, and, and gap analysis solution, right? Uh, it's, uh, and, and, uh, it's available in, in, I mean, Creo 4 M100, Creo 5, 6, and 7, right? It's replacing the old uh, tolerance analysis extension. Um, and if you, if you, if you see the, the results here, just an overview of what it does is, uh, like I have this motor assembly where I might be interested in the actual play right on the shaft or maybe in the gap in there between the bearing and the outside housing. I just have to select the two surfaces and it gives you these dimensions automatically. You can also add features, you can add offsets. It's almost like I have some kind of a spacer there that I've not modeled, but I can go include that. So it's, it's, it allows you to take advantage of existing dimensions uh, as well as, or, or can, you know, tolerances that you've applied, as well as create or, right on the fly. You can do it both manually and automatically with different types of reporting available, right? You have different types of analysis types here, as you can see, statistical versus worst case. And, you know, once you have a problem or it's not meeting our goal, we can also always look at, okay, this is the dimension that's contributing the most. It gives you a percentage of contribution for this analysis, the housing dimension seems to be the one. So I know which one to tighten now, right? Oh, so that's 0.01. I can, if I if I'm gonna if I'm gonna uh, you know tighten you know give it a, a better tolerance. Now what'll happen? It's gonna you know you it'll hit your goal or you're gonna get a better yield percent. And it happens in in live in real time. You're not having to run it every time. It just gives you updates the results immediately with reporting options too, right? So so again you know on assemblies right mainly on uh, assemblies you know uh, you could do multiple stack up analysis you can even save it as a feature right uh, and immediately the results will update it gives you an interactive tolerance loop uh, right and you can also it supports like i said uh, profile position you know concentricity symmetry and run out geometric tolls as well so if you had that defined in your 3d model it has the ability to pick it up as well right so it's, it's a, and you can even, if you have anything already, if some of you are using the tolerance analysis extension, you can even import that depending on what release you are in, you have the ability to also bring that in actually. So uh, then very powerful results, very quick. You have a, a result, it'll automatically create screenshots for you and, and give you a HTML report, right? Different quality metrics um, that I talked about, right? CPK value, defective parts per million operations, right? Yield percent, all that is uh, can be gotten here. So. From a licensing perspective, um, you know, here's some data, uh, you know, from PTC on the date code support here, starting Creo 4, M110 and later, you have the ability to use either tolerance analysis extension, the old one, if you have that license or the easy tolerance analysis. Uh, if you have, you know, same thing with 5060 uh, or 6030 date codes, you have the ability to, to use either uh, the old one or the new one, but starting 7.0, you will no longer have the old tolerance analysis extension. It's being replaced with easy tolerance analysis starting 7.0, right? So just an FYI on that. And the last topic here, um, you know, before um, actually we go to the last one, I'm gonna show a quick, very quick example on that uh, tolerance uh, analysis here. So if I go to, let's see here, if I could open up a, a couple of examples here. So there's, very simple, um, you know, example here. As you can see, I have a shaft, uh, a bearing, right, a spacer in between, uh, another bearing and a clip. And I'm interested in the. I'm doing a clearance analysis or a gap analysis between this clip and the bearing surface. That's really what I'm interested in, right? So I go to applications, and there is my easy tolerance analysis right there. Okay, and then um, 
pretty straightforward as, as you can see here you build a new stack up uh, right you add it as a feature add offsets move dimensions stack table generate report or you can import your old tolerance analysis extension uh, results as well right it can you can go to options and there are a few things you can set up right for linear dimensions what should be the tolerance for depending on inches or millimeters for size dimensions for gtols right um the cp value the worst case uh, what, what are the analysis types you want to calculate by default right uh, so you know those are the those are the quick setup options you have but the way you create itself is so easy right so you just go to the new stack up and then you specify the surface uh, and I'm going to specify the, the 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 hidden surface of that clip, right? That's it. And now it's asking for the annotation plane, and I'm going to just say maybe I want to select uh, one of these planes here. I'm just going to select that right plane, and I'm just going to drop it right in there. And as you can see, I get it has it has picked up the the path, the mating uh, paths for all those references here automatically, and I just hit OK, and it has built that. Um, stack table or it is showing me the, the dimension loop diagram in my Creo as well as in my report here, right? As you can see, I can go and change these tolerance values for all of them individually. Uh, right now it's doing the worst case, but I could just go and say, okay, maybe we want to get the, the statistical distribution, right? You know, so Six Sigma, there it is, your statistical uh, distribution. And you can also look at the contribution, which dimension is contributing the most. Uh, I can specify a goal, right, for the stack up. What is the intent of doing this actually, right? So I can just go, is it going to be lower limit, upper limit? Is it going to be symmetric, 0 0.06? That's what I'm interested in, right? What is the objective? Um, you know, the, we have not yet met the objective or not, right? Uh, and if I go to the contribution, it gives you that. Uh, you can also look at the, um, uh, the other types, like, for example, uh, the yield percent. Um, there it is, right? It gives you the yield. I'm at 99.73%, right? Yield percent, standard deviation. So next time in manufacturing comes our department, I know I've been during my industry days, uh, you know, the design engineering versus manufacturing engineering. I, I remember those days being in the thick of things between those uh, two departments, but I'm just saying this would be very helpful uh, wherein you're able to show as to why we gave that, that high tolerance or it kind of gives you um the, the target quality right there predicted quality right so you you have uh and you can save it as a feature too right you can quickly generate a report right i could just say this is there's an image that i want to save this image right there it took a snapshot of the image i just say generate report uh and just you know call it some something here we'll just go and it's generated the report right there and and there it is right it gives you that i could have added multiple images but just a quick one, right? Just single click of the generate report essentially gives me the the, the tolerance stack up, right? The dimension loop, uh, the the statistical results, and I could have improved this. I could have gone to this dimension and I could have changed that too in real time, right? I, sh I can do that anytime too. So I can go back to the stack table here and I can just go to contributions. That's this bearing dimension one that they're talking about right there. That's this dimension here. I can simply change it in real time and that's going to affect my results immediate results there and and, and so on right so yeah uh, just wanted to show a quick example on that and um, you know uh, the, if those are using the old tolerance analysis extension it used to be under the analysis and there's a tolerance analysis and this is under applications and there's an easy tolerance right okay so just went on to the very last uh, item here uh, after easy tolerance it's the additive manufacturing uh, site, right? As many of you may have noticed, ever since PTC started, you know, introducing like 3D print support starting Creo 3.0, they have been closing the gap, I would say, between the 3D CAD system and the 3D printer, or uh, in other words, between the CAD model and additive manufacturing, right? You know, in the past, it used to be you export an, uh, an STL file and then you do every other all the other uh, items on printability check and you know everything else you do it inside of you know thin wall checking things like that inside of the software included in the 3d printer and and the and and with all these enhancements over the last several years starting creo 3.0 when they when you could first connect creo to a directly to a printer to support it printers like stratasys printers and a few printers they have support for and you can that's when it all started but the goal is to allow even for lattice 
creation, right? So you're able to create, analyze, and optimize those lattices, different types of lattices supported, right? Two and a half di type, you know, D, 3D, even have stochastic lattices that are very, very uh, useful. They have a very specific uh, use case. Some of you have, may have used it for specific applications like medical implants, right? You know, chemical processes, you know, filtration, right? Uh, shark absorption, sound, etc. right? For those type of products, you might need those special types, custom uh, ones. So all those enhancements have been done over the years. So to give you a, like a high level overview, um, what what the goal uh, that PTC has been doing when it comes to uh, additive manufacturing is in the past, it used to be the CAD model is developed in Creo and then you save it as a STL file and then you do everything inside of the 3D printer. But with over the over Creo 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, I would say the last four releases, step by step, steadily, I have seen PTC, you know, adding more and more enhancements. Some of you may have, you know, if you're already doing 3D printer, I'm sure you're You've been keeping track of those enhancements, but we have a sheet that we could send you, you know, that has specific, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll also show you it's uh, as to what enhancement they did over several releases. But what we want to do is we want to go beyond just exporting an SDL file and we want the ability to do the tray placement. We wanted to do a printability check, right? Interference checking, maybe have different, you know, print, print profiles for different bodies or components, maybe for thin wall, issues right so all those are are starting to being introduced in the cad model itself nowadays and um and that's why you see these enhancements and in, and in, in step by step in each releases there right for example here i've optimized a design using my um, I'm, uh, I'm using a lattice structure here and then i'm going to do the printability check and then i'm going to send it to the 3d printer right so uh, you know, they have, you know, several things over the over several years, uh, PTs, uh, like I said, between three to seven, they have been closing the gap. So it, whether it's direct connect to uh, 3D systems, you know, the polymer printers, or to the I materialized, you know, uh, or to even three system, 3D systems print bureaus, right? They're all, the out of the box functionality is just directly sending it to a printer, but then the additive manufacturing extension gives you some additional capabilities. Uh, since they are partnering with, you know, 3D systems for on-demand manufacturing, materialized, right? Um, so uh, the build direction, lattice modeling, as you can see, that is something, you know, that has been introduced uh, in Creo 4, 5, 6. In 7.0, they have different algorithms for the stochastic lattice, lattices. Stochastic lattices uh, were introduced in Creo 6, but then in 7, they're giving you two different algorithms to make it better. Uh, to map the geometry. So yeah, like that, there's been minor enhancements, but overall, those have not, not seen the, the this closing the gap. I thought I should, you know, just these slides hopefully kind of helps you understand um, uh, where they have been investing on the manufacturing side for on the PTC uh, R&D side, right? So for positioning and nesting, uh, global interference check, the ability to import the 3MF uh, format uh, and CLI export, right? All those are, um, you know, new uh, enhancement dated over between Creo 5 and 6, actually. In Creo 5, they had a 3MF uh, export option. Uh, direct connect to the metal printers. We talked about the, the materialized library. Uh, metal printing starting to pick up these days, right? Unlike back, in the, you know, in the early days of 3D printing, where it was mainly the polymer printing. So, yeah, I mean, um, uh, and finally, you know, we talked about the generative topology design optimization. The the picture that you see is um, is how we got the GT, you know, generative design algorithm to create one for 3D printing, right? So, uh, you know, that's where uh, I, I thought I should just give you an, a quick overview. And here's a little more expansive, I should say, comparison list here. Uh, like I said, Creo 3 is where they started allowing a simple print, you know, direct to print, print check. That's what they started in Creo 3. In 4.0, they went on and, you know, added these connection printers, et cetera, right? Um, and then you could see between five, six, and seven steadily, you know, you know, they have been improving this lattice modeling, formula-based lattices, right? Uh, stochastic ones that are really new now, 3MF support, right? So you could see these uh, little points that you see here where uh, 4.0 had a few enhancements, 5.0 and 6 and 7. And in 7, if you see um, the support for multi-body, now that we have multi-body, 
uh, support in Creo 7.0, we want to make sure we use that on the tray assembly, right? So uh, you can uh, include um, materials in there, the color, all that could be included now. So, okay, so, but what's, what's new? Those who already are aware of that, what has changed in 7.0 in additive manufacturing, like I said, is improvements to the stochastic lattices that they introduced back in Creo 6.0, right? They give you different algorithms here, right? It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it used to be based on the Voronoi diagram algorithm. Um, and now they have the Delaunay triangulation, as you can see here, that's a new thing uh, in 7.0, right? Uh, all the other things like, you know, creating a shell and applying boundary surfaces, all those are there uh, just like we had, they had before. But in 7.0, of course, you know, it's really shapes like these. Like I was telling you, some of those applications for stochastic, stochastic lattices are huge for medical implants, especially, right? Uh, it's almost uh, like, um, yeah. And then, so uh, you, you can also create your own custom cell. Uh, as you can see here, non rep quill geometry. Um, that is also possible now with 7.0 uh, and multi-body design. That's a the big, big improvement here where you could imagine having um, you, you know, uh, different print profiles uh, based on the thin wall geometry. You could have different bodies defined and they all could have different um, you know, support parameters or I should say build process parameters. Um, and, and, and that was possible mainly because PTC introduced the ability to have multiple bodies here, as you can see here, right? I have, whenever you open a Creo file now, there are config options to turn off multiple bodies if you don't want them, but by default, you can keep adding multiple bodies and each body could have a build processor, as you can see here, right? So that's one of the big enhancements to happen in Creo 7.0, okay? And as always in subtractive manufacturing, um, like toolpath, as you all know, uh, in in um, uh, in, uh, in Creo on the CAM side, in the model tree, you're able to select those toolpaths and it'll highlight. But now they also in, introduce that ability to display the toolpath uh, while doing synchronization on your workbench, right? So you have these synchronization dialog box here where I'm selecting these. Uh, as I select those toolpaths, I want it to be highlighted. And there's a nice little option here right now. Okay, so a few enhancements there. And in the past, you had to make do some custom uh, coding here, and now they allow you, you to use this go home position, right? Where they have an end stop condition parameter where you can set it to go home, and you can assign a numeric value, and it's uh, much better than before. So here I have set up the go home uh, end stop condition to go home. Can specify a value for it and you can see that's in the cl data i could see that being reflected there um, and swiss turning has been added to mill turn um, which means you can go and go to your um, work center and then you can enable the swiss turning it's a parameter that you set to yes and you would see in the cl data you know that that's, that's corresponding to that swiss turn uh, turning on that parameter so uh, a few other things on on last few things on extensions here whether it's a Creo flow analysis, which was a much more full-fledged, more powerful CFD powered by Simerix. Even there, right, where they, they, that's still there, it is there in Creo uh, 7.0, but they've done some improvements, right? They have much more of a wizard-based workflow um, compared to before where it had to be manually done. It's a little more easier for new users now. Uh, you can try, uh, there's better options for fluid domain extraction uh, and you can uh, have better outputs like exporting to CSV or you know creating animation files if you use Creo flow analysis. You know that was introduced in Creo four again. Um, you can also they also have some better integration to Creo simulate. Maybe you wanted to export the pressure distribution from Creo uh, flow analysis into Creo, right? You could just export it as an FNF file, bring it in as a boundary condition, and then run it and simulate as a static analysis. You know so. Uh, and even in things like AR design share, right? Where you may be using before your view to, to publish your uh, AR experiences. The new enhancement in Creo 7 is they allow combination states. As you know, combination states are very useful for model-based definition. It's also very useful in large assemblies where you may have different views, different objects hidden, unhidden, right? Different view orientations, different annotations showing up, different layer state. All that could be combined in, 
it could be it, it is called combination state in Creo assembly mode that it can leverage when you export an AR experience, right? So you have the ability to publish that as well now. Okay, so so with that, I uh, you know we are uh, running a little bit over time here. Let me let me just see, uh, um, you know, let me go through kind of before I look at the questions here. Those who are still on Creo six, five, or four, right? If you're looking at up, up, upgrading to Creo seven point uh, you may also have wind chills. So I thought, you know, uh, just to give a screen in a snapshot here of Windchill support for Creo. You can also get it off of ptc.com and the knowledge base, the compatibilities uh, there. But um, and there's very nice what's new documentation these days uh, uh, on you know tutorials, videos, etc. Right? You could go to the once you launch Creo, you go to help and reference, and there's a what's new uh, document. There's a config option PDF. All these are PDFs. It'll even tell you what config options have changed between each releases. Right? Uh, for example, here, this is a screenshot of what's new tutorials in the Help Center, right, in Creo 7, across the board, all the way from, you know, advanced framework extension or design, all the way to the core modeling areas, installation, enhancements, sheet metal design. You can see quite a lot of them, and you can go over those. And many of them have some YouTube links as well, right? And this is um, the, some of the screenshots of those PDFs. All you have to go do is, from Creo, file help, and it takes you to those, right? Uh, Creo 7010 is the latest one, but here I have a screenshot where it not only gives you the config options, but also the difference between these two. If you're an admin, that's very important, right? I want to know what has changed, what has deleted, what has been added, what what uh, for what config options has the default values changed, etc. Right? All that is included in there. Okay. And as always, you know, like I reminded earlier, uh, if you have, uh, if you'd like to, you know, go over some of these uh, webinars that we have been doing. Uh, almost every two weeks or a month. Uh, all those are available in our YouTube channel. You can either go to tristar.com, go to Resource Center, CAD, um, uh, and then access it from there. Or it's much easier just to go to YouTube, TriStar and Incorporate, and then there you will have these videos. So for example, uh, some of these, uh, Creo 7, you know, we had one just on multi-body design, right? If you want to focus only on that, one on core enhancements. This one is on exciting technology. There's so many enhancements. so we, we, we instead of trying to do everything in one, we have been uh, doing multiple ones in there um, on new on shape, right? We we had one on Creo Illustrate a couple of weeks ago. My colleague Bogdan did, and a week uh, in our last week, my colleague Katie she did uh, one on MathCAD. So so feel free to please check out these uh, videos uh, re recordings of our webinar. Uh, they are uh, very useful. Many of them there are some tips and tricks, as well as new product introduction, what's new very useful information that will be helpful for you and your team, okay? Um, and let me, with that, let me just go to uh, the questions area here and see if there are any uh, questions here. Um, I'm just going to go and uh, if you could start typing in some uh, the questions. That, yeah, let me just see if there's any questions. <clears throat> Again, in the chat session uh, or in the, in the go to webinar area, you should see uh, uh, a questions uh, uh, tab, and there you should you know if you could start typing in your questions. Um, let's see here. I'm not seeing any questions as of yet. We'll just give everyone a, a minute here. <laughs> Okay, so looks like there are no questions at this point. Uh, again, before we wrap up, I just wanted to remind you all uh, once again about the, those uh, offers, uh, the time limited offers uh, that are uh, this, that they're running this quarter. Uh, so feel free to reach out to your account reps at TriStar or please visit TriStar.com if you'd like to know more information uh, uh, about these uh, new offers that are running through uh, end of September. Um, again, you know, thanks for uh, joining. Uh, th I hope uh, this webinar was useful to get an overview on the new exciting technologies that PTC introduced over the last few releases, including 7.0. Um, uh, please visit us at tristar.com. Let us know if you have any questions or call us at 800-800-1714. Okay, so 
thanks for taking the time to attending this. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon in another webinar. Thank you.